and dying in your beds many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days from this day to that for one chance, just one chance, to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! Mel Gibson playing William Wallace, a true Scottish hero and a man that fought for freedom, but in a disturbing turn, the people of Scotland are about to give up their freedom for a UN document. It all has to do with a new bill to do with children and young people going through the Scottish Parliament. It says the Scottish minister must keep under consideration whether there are any steps they could take which might secure better or further uh, effect in Scotland of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child requirements. What's that? Well, it's a UN document. It's one of these things that all the countries sign on to that doesn't have any effect until they bring in a bill. But what does this bill specifically propose to do? Well, you might be surprised. Here's what Eileen Campbell, the children's minister, is proposing. The bill would promote, support, or safeguard the well-being of a child. It would advise, inform, and support child or parent, help child or parent access services, and discuss child with the authorities. How? By assigning them a social worker from birth. John Robson joins me now before my head explodes. And John, William Wallace talking all about freedom. Scotland in the middle of a, a campaign to get their freedom from Britain. And then they're going to sign it all away to some busybody bureaucrat who's going to come in and tell you how to live your life. Yeah, this to me is absolutely extraordinary. Surely the whole purpose of devolution and independence is to secure the rights the Scots seem to think they've been fighting for for over 700 years. This famous declaration of Aberoth at the same time as William Wallace and Robert the Bruce and all these heroes saying essentially all we want is to be left alone. Yeah, let, let's and bring up the declaration that. of Aberoth right now. It says we, we fight not for glory, wealth or honor but for that liberty with, without which no virtuous man will survive. Allow us Scotsmen who dwell in a poor and remote quarter and who seek for naught but our own to dwell in peace. Yeah, and now, seriously, a government person attached at birth to every child, and they'll discuss the child with the authorities. They are the authorities. You know, talk about co-parenting. You'd be lucky if you're allowed to co-parent. They're going to march in here. But this is also the country where a health authority once actually put in a pamphlet instructing you on how to go to the bathroom. Like, they seriously think you can't do that. I thought yourself. you were joking and, until I looked it up. And it was the Tayside National Health Service Office, which is around the Dundee area of Scotland. They put this out, how to sit on the toilet and go to the bathroom. Yeah, and if they don't think you know how to do that, despite the fact that Scots have, I gather, been coping with this task since the beginning of time, they certainly don't think you can raise your own child. And the Scots meekly put up with it. The most famously independent, uh, even one might say bloody-minded people just about in history who will not have someone infringe upon their rights, who will fight anybody no matter how long the odds rather than be told what to do in the smallest and most trivial matter imaginable. One thing that united Highlands and Lowlands is nobody's going to tell us what to do and they put up with this. And to me, this to me is a symptom of a much deeper sickness in a civilization that the Scots are not attached to their children. I, I looked up some of the demographics of Scotland, and it's just, these numbers are astonishing. Around the turn of the, the last century, over 110,000 babies were born in Scotland. That was um, in 1903. That was 130,000, excuse me. The peak of their baby boom, 113. Last year, it was 58,000. From 1995 to 2005 inclusive, deaths exceeded births in Scotland. They're now, births are slightly higher, but there are now um, just 290,000 Scots under the age of five. There are 585,000 government employees. So, so they could assign one government employee for every child and still have plenty left over. Yeah, but what they can't do, I also looked up, there are, the government's boasting, they're so pleased with themselves, we couldn't be great, happier. There's over 5,000 social workers in Scotland now, whoop de doo But there are 58,000 babies. You haven't got a social worker for every kid. You're going to give every one of these social workers 12 babies and seriously think they're going to care more about these kids than the parents do, which tragically, if that's true, it's a dreadful comment on Scottish civilization. But I think that we should care about this because the basis of it is the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. And this is what is used. These types of documents are used to try and foist new developments 
in Canada. And we've had calls for a, a children's commissioner to be brought in in Canada, which eventually I would assume would lead to a similar type of, of scheme here in this country. We've had calls for uh, changes in how we eat, how food is distributed based on UN documents. This is the growth of the global bureaucracy with zero accountability. Yeah, and, and but the thing I'm, I'm tempted to apply with David Ben-Gurion's oom schmoom comment about the UN, the problem isn't that the UN has all these grandiose dreams and arrogance, it's that we put up with it. This scheme is introduced, a government social worker stapled to every child, and what does the conservative opposition say about it? The deputy measure says, well, it's a very huge enterprise. How many persons do you anticipate there will be? What will the turnover be in named persons? And how in practice does that really establish a bond of confidence on which people feel they can rely? That's the they conservative. Should be saying, yeah, this is impossible. You're not going to send some social worker to everybody's house, whether they invited them or not. They'll be thrown out, and we'll be right there with the families who won't let them in. Instead, it's like, well, how does one establish a bond of confidence? Send me 10 sociologists for every social worker, and we'll make this great engineering enterprise work. That's how the UN gets in, because you surrendered before they showed up, because you actively are willing to have agents of this state and a foreign state intrude on the most intimate matters of your family life instead of saying get the heck off my land which is what William Wallace very certainly would have said and followed it up too. Uh, uh, we're almost out of time but I want to ask you um, what do you make of the fact that and I know you don't support Scottish independence I know you don't support the uh, socialist SNP and Alex Salmond but this idea that they are in the middle of a campaign the vote September 2014 let's get our independence from Britain so that we can surrender it to the surrender it to the permanent bureaucracy. I, I think it's just pitiful. I mean, I don't know what's so wrong with the United Kingdom. It's not like Scotland did badly. Apparently, by the way, there are 15 million McDonald's in the world. There's only five million people in Scotland. The Scots flourished under the United Kingdom, which admittedly is on hard times. But why you'd want to get rid of Westminster with all its growing feebleness in order to invite in the UN, which is only useless on a good day and is actively malicious on a bad day? There is just no thought of first principles. If you must declare your independence, do it in the name of your your independence. The Scots can run Scotland. They could sure do it better than the UN. I just do not know what has happened to the spirit of that people that they would not even defend their right to raise their own children against this kind of intrusion. All right, John Robson. Oh, Robson, good Scottish name. Good talking to you as always.